What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is NCIS Season 18, Episode 4, Sunburn. So it's a pretty good episode, uh, definitely a lot of good mysteries involving what's going on with Fornell, what's going on behind the scenes that clearly we're not aware of, um, and the fact that Vance is apparently involved in all of this as well, definitely raises a lot of questions, and the next episode, cause, just because it's pulled up right now, I could see it's Head of the Snake, and I know that's one of the terms that I think Fornell was using talking about this, the Gibbs called him Merriweather at the end of this episode, or Vance did. So, I'm guessing the next episode we're finally going to get some more information about exactly who this group is. Um, so, I'm, I'm excited to see more about that. But, outside of that stuff, the case itself had some good moments in it. You know, it was a little, a little predictable in the way that McGee and Delilah are down, basically vacationing in the Bahamas. And when they showed them, my first thought is, so I'm guessing the case is going to tie into the Bahamas, right? Because it couldn't just be, oh yeah, McGee's away on vacation, and then we don't ever see him because he's away on vacation. But the fact that we see him and Delilah there, like, so he's probably going to tie in to the case somehow, or they're going to be solving a case of their own, maybe? Because you just, you don't show characters out on vacation on a show like NCIS, a crime show, if they're not going to be solving some sort of crime, so that was a little predictable. I liked how they decided to tie it in, though. And honestly, I really liked Delilah's reaction, too. It wasn't so much a, God, I can't believe he's he's deciding to work now instead of spending time with me. It was, no, let's make a day of this. Let's try to make the best of this situation. And I feel like Delilah and McGee have really been, in my opinion, one of my favorite relationships in this show, just because they did such a good job of building them up and... They showed their differences, they showed a couple of the, the times that they've had some difficulties, but ultimately, they stuck through a lot of it. You know, they've they've dealt with a lot too, so I do wish she got to show up a bit more. I get why she doesn't, but I don't know, I just, I like seeing her and McGee get to spend time together and get to be a good couple. Um, so this was a good episode for them in that sense, and yeah, just seeing them work together on certain issues in the Bahamas on different case aspects, I, I enjoyed it and I had a lot of fun with it as well. Um, the case was also pretty good just as far as the way they set up certain twists, as, as far as the, oh, this doctor drowned and this other guy who just so happened to be called, last name, Mason. It's so weird sometimes, just... <laughs> watching something and hearing your name being used, especially mine, because Mason is not a super common name to be used. I mean, obviously you got like Masonry and the Freemason, so it's it's a name that's been used before. But as far as like people being called Mason, I don't hear it very often, so when it does happen, it's weird. Like, playing Black Ops was so weird for me the first time. <laughs> especially because I'm a math guy, so hearing, the numbers, Mason, what do they mean? I'm like, well, I know what the numbers mean, actually. Not those numbers, but I normally know what numbers... <laughs> Anyways, a little tangent. But finding out that this doctor faked his death, finding out that the the uh, project he was working on was actually supposed to be a weapons thing, and that's not what he wanted. And then, of course, the woman... I kind of suspected the woman a little bit, just because... I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking... So it's probably not going to be the one guy that we saw earlier who suspected that the doctor hadn't actually been accidentally killed but murdered um it probably won't be him because he's a little too obvious of the villain so whenever they start questioning him i'm thinking okay so who's the actual villain going to be and the only other person that came to mind was either the one random guy who turned out to be gibbs's friend who was just pretending not to be gibbs's friend or the the wife partner i don't i don't know exactly if they were married or if they were just dating um but she was the one i had in mind i'm just like probably going to be her then, and sure enough, she turned out to be the villain, so it was straightforward, but I, I still enjoyed going for the ride, and I enjoyed seeing how the team came to these conclusions, and it wasn't so much a, oh, well, we just suddenly figured out this, or we just suddenly figured out this off screen. We actually got to see a lot of the, the steps being taken, so yeah, uh, overall, pretty good episode. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen next with Fornell and Merriweather and all this stuff. Uh, it was nice also, just a little side scene that happened, getting to see Emily get her six-month pin. I thought that was a nice scene, but of course, I feel like she's not quite as worried as 
I feel like I would have been if, you know, my dad didn't show up to my sobriety pin celebration. And he said he was going to be there, especially somebody like Fornell, who is so passionate about his daughter and wants to be there for her. I feel like she would have been a little bit more worried. Like, Gibbs, have you heard anything from him? Because I haven't heard from him in a bit, and it's, it's really concerning me. But she was just kind of like, yeah, it's weird, isn't it, that he's not here? I, I don't know. It just seemed a little odd <laughs> that she wouldn't be more concerned. But that's about the only thing I could say about that. But yeah, on to the next episode. I'll see you there. And now, episode five, Head of the Snake. So I really do wonder why it feels like it's become a lot less common, especially in this show, for there to be recurring villains. Like, they will build these villains up. You know, they'll have these villains show up and be like, oh, we gotta take them down. And then they'll just be taken down in the same episode. You know, like, you think about uh, Sahar. Like, yes, there was a little bit of twisting and turning where it turns out it was actually somebody who we didn't know was not Sahar, and then finds out, oh, later on, this is who Sahar actually is. But it still feels like once you find out who this person is, that's it. Like, you don't see him again. <laughs> and the same thing happened here. We finally find out who this Meriwether guy is, the, the head of this whole operation, running these drugs and everything. And in the very same episode, he's taken down. <laughs> so, I don't know, it just, it feels like this idea of we see the villain, we know who the villain is, and then they come back later because they got away, it feels like it doesn't happen very often anymore. Um, and I don't really know why. <laughs> I feel like this would have been a good one to end on he gets away for the time being. You know, Bishop manages to, to stay off the plane that blows up. McGee gets shot because Gibbs was keeping him out of the plane being blown up. But <laughs> he gets away. You know, we, we don't know what happens to him, but he's obviously going to be coming after NCIS now, especially after what they did to his operation. He had to kill a lot of his guys because he felt like they got fooled too easily. I expected to see him just come back another episode and then we have to take him on again, but no, it's just, oh yeah, his uh, daughter's having a party, let's go take him down at the party, and that was it. So, I don't know, it just seems a little odd, and maybe it's the story's not over. You know, kind of like Sahar made it seem like, okay, she's done, her story's done. But then find out later, actually, that wasn't Sahar. Maybe something similar will happen here where, yes, we took him down, but there's more to the story. He he had a backup plan, or they did imply that he was working for somebody else, um, like becoming more of a terrorist instead of a drug runner. So maybe that'll somehow play into the story for this season, but I don't know. It just, for me personally, I like it whenever it's more than just, here's the one episode and we're done <laughs> with the character. Um, so I'm a little disappointed that that's kind of where NCIS has started to go. But, as far as the episode itself, I thought it was good, very well done, storytelling, you know, seeing the different moving pieces, seeing Fornell, basically, where he is at the moment, <clears throat> being stuck in this situation where he feels like he has to just keep playing along until he gets to meet the head honcho, um, but ultimately they figure it out anyway that, you know, he was... A federal agent. Um, and yeah, they were just, I don't know, overall it was just really good. There wasn't really anything huge of note to talk about. I do wonder how we're going to go forward with Gibbs and McGee from now on. Um, I, <sighs> did I think it was going to be something like this where he shot him for a good reason? Yeah, you know, I, I kind of assumed, so there's probably something, whether it's Gibbs is trying to play along, you know, to make it seem like, okay, you know, I gotta shoot him to, to make it, the bad guys think that I'm on their side. I, I, I expected it to be something along those lines, so to see that he was trying to stop him from going into the plane, and it, it makes sense why McGee would not stop after getting shot. <laughs> you know, because, yeah, he thinks Bishop is on the plane, he wants to go help her, and his comms aren't working because they were sabotaged. It makes sense. I do wonder, though, if this how this is going to play going forward, because I, I assume, I mean, Delilah was even like, you... Who did that to save his life. I, I assume McGee's gonna know that, but Gibbs clearly will still feel like he's responsible. And I'm sure, being the sniper that he is, I'm sure he's pissed at himself that he ended up hitting an artery, because I know he was probably trying to go for, like, just a shot in the leg that wasn't going to seriously, like, fatally wound him, just a shot that was gonna essentially keep him down so the plane didn't blow up. Um, or, well, 
the plane didn't blow up with him in it. So the fact that he ended up nicking a femoral artery and causing him to nearly bleed out, I'm sure he's probably going to be himself up over that shot. And I wonder if we're going to maybe get that in this next episode a bit um, and kind of maybe get Sloan to, to get him to talk a bit more about what's going through his mind. Because all I can see right now is just it seems like he feels guilty just because he's not really wanted to talk about it. He goes and visits him in the hospital, even though everybody's like, you know, yeah, we're just going to head on home and see McGee tomorrow. He's like, no, straight to the hospital. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm curious about it, though. Uh, it was also a nice moment for Fornell to finally get to see his daughter again. Uh, she obviously very concerned when she came home and <laughs> saw all the blood and everything messed up. So uh, it, was, it was a nice moment for them, too, and her giving him the sobriety pin that she got uh, just Nice, nice touching moment. Um, trying to think what else. If there's anything else really. They they keep pushing forward this whole Bishop and Torres thing. They didn't really make any steps in this episode, but you could clearly see by Torres's reaction. Oh, he really cares about her, guys. He he's worried she's gonna get hurt. Um, but nothing really happened at the end of it. It's not like they shared some romantic emotional moment. They just. It was a nice moment for them to reconnect after she got kidnapped. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Just good episode, but still have my issues with the Bishop and Torres storyline. And um, I have a lot of questions going forward about what are we going to see for the rest of the season? Is this story completely done? Are they going to start building up some new bad guy? We'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, all in all, pretty solid. So on to the next one. I'll see you there. Now, episode six, one millimeter. Um, pretty good. Pretty good. Obviously, nothing really building as far as overarching story, but a little bit of a chance to sort of reflect on what happened last episode. You know, McGee having that conversation with Gibbs at the end I thought was really well said. Um, the stuff with Bishop Adora is still not really that interested in it. Still don't think they're going to be a good couple, but whatever. We're still pushing it forward, clearly. <laughs> um, was still nothing happening. Uh, it's like, I'm trying to think of a good example. It's like Jim and Karen, you know, like Jim and Pam, great couple. And we were just waiting for it to happen. But imagine if it was Jim and Karen that were doing the on again, off again thing. And just, are they going to, are they going to go? Are they going to get together? Are they not going to get What if it was Jim and Karen? Nobody liked them together. Nobody wanted them together. Or hell, Michael and Jan. I know I'm using the office references for friends. I don't know. Like, I think of a good example on that one that nobody wanted to see together. I mean, to be fair, there are some people that are like, Ross and Rachel? What? Um, but it's just, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to see them together. And the show is just dragging it out so long that it's becoming so unbearable to watch. Every episode that they don't get together now, I'm just like, my god. We're going to have to deal with another episode of this. Oh, are they going to... Are they not gonna? It's just... <laughs> just a migraine forming watching this crap. So, and it was it was a good episode. I enjoyed the intensity of it. I enjoyed them trying to deal with the situation of being locked in this prison that was also rigged to blow. But it still doesn't really change my opinion of it. And by the end of it, again, what are we left with? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing new. Everything's still the same. They're still not together. We're still dealing with the little glances like the... Oh, I, I kind of like you, but I'm not going to say it. Well, I kind of like you, and I'm not going to say it. <sighs> so that's, that is slightly rage-inducing, but yeah, everything else was, was really good. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have anything more to say about this episode. That's pretty much all of it. So we'll see going forward. Again, I'm not really sure what to expect for the rest of the season. Um kind of hope that we'll, we'll get something as far as an overarching story whether it's again going back to whoever hired this Meriwether guy maybe he'll become involved um, or just introducing another bad guy for them to take down by the end of the season but I just I want something to grasp onto I don't want to go back into a series of oh well here's another episode that doesn't tie really into anything and here's another one that doesn't really tie into anything and here's another one it's just I get sort of worn out having to do deal with that um so i don't know we'll see though <sighs> yeah decent three episodes 
and that's about it. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss all the good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe, future NCIS reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.